friends and welcome to the electric viking fantastic to have you here it's another wonderful day and you know what yet another car yet another car has been released to market in china and it's going to cost less than four thousand us dollars it's an actual car it's got a battery pack and it fits two people and you know what a friend of mine just paid twelve thousand us dollars for a bicycle without a motor or a battery you got to push it with your legs. You can buy a car in China for less than 4,000 US dollars. Made by a joint venture between General Motors, SAIC, and Wuling. Now the first real mass market sub 5,000 US dollar car was supposed to be on the planet a few decades ago. That car could have been the ICE version of the Tata Nano, which was obviously an Indian brand, but the Nano never really took off at the scale envisioned by Tata back then. It did, however, reignite the conversation into the need for an affordable bare bones basic small city vehicle all around the world. A vehicle that would meet a lot of commuters' needs and a decent vehicle to take one from point A to point B to point B without warp speed 0 to 100 takeoff and a plethora of bells and whistles. Now guys, obviously most people don't live in the Western world. There's 1.4 billion people in China, there's about that many in India, and there's a lot of people in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Central and Southern America who simply can't afford the kind of vehicles that we here in the Western world can afford. Unfortunately, a new star and hope for a new people's car was born last year in China. And this time, it's even better because it's all electric. Now, around the middle of last year, the, the SAIC General Motors and Wuling Partnership released the Hongwan Mini EV. In just over six months, the Mini EV sold 120,000 vehicles in China in 2020, in second place to only the Tesla Model 3, which sold 140,000 units in 2020. Now the Mini EV has continued its incredible run in China and is currently topping the sales charts for 2021. Or well, it was at the start of the year. It's in second place now to Tesla. However, Wuling GM and SAOC have sold even more vehicles this year. In the first five months of this year, they sold nearly 170,000 of these in China alone. Imagine how many they could sell if they weren't selling them only in China. Now, the Mini EV is super popular in third tier Chinese cities, and it's enabling people who would not have been able to afford a car to be able to get a decent, affordable vehicle. It starts at only 4,200 US dollars, and its appeal to non-consumers on the market traditionally targeted by automakers has a real potential disrupt to disrupt the auto industry globally. Now, the SAIC General Motors and Wuling partnership is planning to produce at least 500,000 of these mini EVs this year. The success of the Hongwan mini EV shows there is a huge market for these basic EVs. I've got a question for you. If you didn't have a lot of money, would you consider buying one of these for 4000 US dollars. I know I really would. It makes a lot of sense. 4,000 US dollars is a game changer. But what about if I told you there was a new model about to come out? It's going to be even cheaper. It's going to be less than 4,000 US dollars, maybe even as cheap as 3,000 US dollars. Well, what about if you live in a country where there are EV incentives? Let's say this car was available for a little bit of a premium, a couple of thousand more than this in your country and you qualify for EV incentives, which you would in many countries, the United States, Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, many countries through Europe, China, how cheap would it be then? Would it be almost free? Maybe it would. Well, you know what's really exciting is the emergence of a brand new nano-sized EV from Wuling, SAOC, and General Motors. Now, just as an aside here, what on earth is General Motors doing? They are in dire straits. The number of cars they sold this last year was half what they sold five years ago. Half. Half. And General Motors knows the world is trending towards EVs. Why don't they bring in something like this? Why not sell something like this in many countries around the world and not just China? Well, GM, if you're listening, I'm putting the question out there. I think it would do well. So Wuling has just released the Wuling Hongguan Nano EV. It's a little bit smaller than the mini version, but as you can see, it easily fits two people. So SAIC GM Wuling General Motors, a second joint venture in China, 
achieved a really great level of success in the EV vehicle segment, with the Wuling Hongguan Mini EV recently became the world's best-selling electric car for a period of time, and it's only on sale in one country, so that's insane. Now, the manufacturer's zero emissions lineup will grow with the upcoming Wuling Hongguan Nano EV, which has just been revealed. Now, the leaked images show that the upcoming Wuling Hongguan Nano EV is directly related to the Baozhan E200, launched a few years ago on the Chinese market, and it serves as the joint venture's most affordable model. Its small body measures 98.4 inches long, 60 inches wide, and 63.6 inches high, and it's mounted on a 63-inch wheelbase, which is slightly longer than the Baozhan's wheelbase. Now, leaked data shows that the Wuling Hongguan Nano EV will be equipped with a 230 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, very similar to that of the aforementioned Baozhan E200, with which it shares its architecture. In addition, the powertrain will consist of a small 24 kilowatt electric motor, which is around about 32 horsepower, while the mini EV, which is a bit bigger, has only a 20 kilowatt motor. So, to extrapolate those size figures into the most logical way to talk about those, Using the metric system, it's 2.5 meters long, 1.5 meters wide, and 1.6 meters high, with a wheelbase of 1.6 meters. Now, another publication has reported the motor will actually be 40 kilowatt, which would be more like 60 horsepower, and have 150 newt meters of torque. Now, if that is true, this thing is going to be a bit of a pocket rocket because it's only going to weigh a few hundred kilos maybe 400 kilo. That's a fair bit of power and torque for a car of that size. So it's going to be quicker than you think. Now, apparently the NEDC range will be around about 305 kilometers. That's the claim range. I reckon you're more likely to see around a 200 kilometer range, but still, that's pretty good. So the battery is actually 28 kilowatt hours. And like I said before, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. Advantages of a lithium iron phosphate battery are, well, they're cheaper, first of all, Secondly, they can do a lot of cycles, a lot of charging cycles. BYD's lithium-ion phosphate battery can do 10,000 charge cycles before it sees any degradation. So that means you don't have to really worry too much about your battery dying. Of course, there are some small disadvantages, such as the battery density in lithium-ion phosphate batteries is a bit lower than NCM batteries. But really, I think lithium-ion phosphate batteries, despite their cons, are the way forward. Now, one of the other issues with lithium ion phosphate batteries that people find is that in colder climates, when it's cold, they take longer to charge and the range can be reduced. Now, I think going forward, this will be an issue that manufacturers will be able to solve with battery heating, doing things like what Tesla does, where they pre-warm the pack before you start the car, things like that, which will be able to kind of mitigate that issue. But all in all, the batteries, as long as you understand what you're buying, is something that's really not going to cause you significant issues and be a deal breaker. Now this trend of mini EVs is kind of taking off right now in China and I'm hoping that this is just the start of a new global trend. The Costan EC1 was recently released which is also a mini EV and it's a new EV brand focused just on mini cars. Costan's Chinese name is Quilu. The Costan EC1 was jointly developed by Cherry New Energy, a subsidiary of the larger Cherry Group, and Quilu Automobile. Quilu Automobile is a wholly owned subsidiary of the local government of Shandong Province. Now, the Costan EC1 is manufactured by Cherry New Energy Automobile in a new factory in Shandong Province, and Quilu Automobile have said that they are going to develop three complete EV vehicle platforms for the near future. And we don't know what the price of this new vehicle will be, but you can expect it to be somewhere between 5,000 and 8,000 US dollars. Now, another car which I just made a video on, and I'll put the link in the description below in this segment, is the Baozhan E300 EV, which is similar to the SAIC Wuling Hongguan Mini, but a little bit bigger. And it comes in two variants a sort of a smaller version with no back seat and a bigger version with a back seat. And this is said to be it's more of a premium vehicle and it will cost base price of 9,000 US dollars. So you can see there's a range of mini EVs coming out now and I can see this segment really taking off. The reason is because it's gonna provide mobility to many of the world's people who previously could only afford 
either a bicycle or an electric motorbike or an electric scooter, something in that area. Now, obviously, if you don't live in Asia, you're probably unaware that many people ride electric scooters and have done for years and years and years, even actually decades. So this is definitely a segment. But imagine instead of only being able to afford one of those to take your family around, you could now afford a car. This is huge. I love this kind of thing because it means the quality of life for so many millions of people will drastically improve. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you guys. Bye-bye.